Welcome to The State of Us. Real people with honest opinions and the future of responsible media. Here's your host, Justin T. Weller. So far, 18 states have considered legislation related to arming school employees. Much of it concerning allowing firearms for designated security personnel, but some bills arming teachers and staff more broadly. According to the Wall Street Journal, as a new school year starts, Florida's plan to allow armed teachers as a defense against school shootings has fallen flat. Only seven of Florida's 67 county school districts say they have approved or would consider arming teachers, according to a survey of school officials by the Wall Street Journal. None of the state's largest 25 districts, including Miami-Dade, Broward, Broward, and Orange, have approved the program. With the exception of Bay County, home to Panama City, there are all small, mostly rural counties. Well, why are we talking about this and why do you care? There are nearly 50 million public school students in these United States and another 3 million plus public school teachers, uh, a huge segment of the population every day, uh, well, every, excuse me, Monday through Friday, spends time, every workday spends time in these facilities, uh, and it's a huge industry um, in in light of using a, a less business type term, but I mean, that's kind of the reality. There's a huge portion of our population that spends time in education, whether that's the kids or the teachers. Um, and naturally, over the past number of years, uh, more attention is being paid to school shootings, and there's a lot more thought being put into how do we keep kids safe. Um, so today, we're going to talk about why uh, this is falling flat in Florida, and also talk about whether or not sh- schools should consider arming teachers at all. So that's what we'll be looking at today, but of course, no conversation would be complete without your friendly redneck liberal, Lance Jackson. Good day, sir. Yeah? Yep. You're a former educator, just for our listeners, right? Mm, You could say current as well, but yes. Okay. Former, current, sort of. Lifelong educator. Yes. How's that? Mm -hmm. I've been lifelong in the public school system. 32 plus years. Either as a teacher or a coach or a substitute and or check all the above boxes. Okay. Long time. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, and you do education on this show. Right. Or try to. Right. (laughs) It's obviously what you say, what you stated, what I picked out of that was it's a consideration. Obviously, it's a consideration to do this. Yes. The question is, is this an educated response or an hysterical response? It's a response. To a situation. It is a response. And you obviously can consider it. Yes. But is it a wise consideration or is it not a wise consideration? Well, and I think it's important to note that um, the Florida Senate President Bill Galvano uh, said, quote, my concern is that they have adequate security and uh, we wanted to give them an additional tool, Mr. Galvano said. The, The thing I read into this, and maybe I shouldn't, is that lawmakers were under pressure to do something. Sure. So they did something. And... The important thing to know with this is Florida didn't say you should arm teachers. They right. just merely said school boards. Can decide. They passed the buck. Right. They made it so that they no longer, right. basically they're absolving themselves of responsibility. They, they, say, can, well, they can stand up know. to their constituents and say, I did something. Right. So, I, I said your local school boards, which in Florida, it sounds like they are county school boards. They're yeah. not necessarily Correct. You know, by the city, but each state can, you know, that's one thing that the federal government I can't even say that anymore. But the federal government used to keep its hands out of education, but they don't anymore. Thank you, George W. Bush. Um, but they have now absolved themselves of of anything as politicians because we've said now you can do this if you want to. So there you go. Well, our job is done. We responded to the crisis. Let's move on to something that's a little bit easier for us to deal with. Again, it was done at a time when people – wanted action. Does that always mean the best action was taken? Or is this the best action to be taken? Well, you know, put more guns out there so that if somebody comes in, then you can shoot them before they shoot you. Is that, is that the America that we now live in? So the Washington Post did a piece entitled, 
armored school doors, bulletproof whiteboards, and secret snipers. Billions are being spent to protect children from school shootings. Does any of it work? And part of what they did um, is they contacted 79 different schools. 34 of those provided answers, including Sandy Hook Elementary. Their responses to questions about what they had learned, some brief but many rich in detail, provided valuable insight from administrators in urban, suburban, and rural districts who, as a group, have faced the full spectrum of campus gun violence, targeted, indiscriminate, accidental, and self-inflicted. So they, I mean, they really, they did, they talked to a wide variety of mm-hmm. places that experienced, I mean, they've gone through these shootings. Mm-hmm. And they asked if anything could have prevented the shootings at their schools. Nearly half of respondents, school districts, replied that there was nothing that could have been done to prevent it. Several, however, emphasized the critical importance of their staffs developing deep, trusting relationships with students who often hear about threats before teachers do. Only one school suggested that any kind of safety technology might have made a difference. Many had robust security plans, however, already in place, but still couldn't stop the incidents. So... um as the article in the Wall Street Journal goes on, and again, both of these will be linked on the stateofus.org, um, part of what they're highlighting is the state gave the schools the option. Mm-hmm. Most schools have decided not to go this route. At this point. Right. There are other states, um, and they've got a, a, a nice infographic that you guys can take a look at. A chart, as we learned, uh, it, it is classified as a chart. Um, and they've got bills to allow firearms, bills to restrict and prohibit, and failed or didn't pass. Um, notably, New York has a bill that has been enacted to restrict or prohibit firearms in schools, along with Rhode Island um, and Minnesota. While schools that have enacted bills to allow firearms include New Mexico, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Florida, Alabama, North Dakota, Wyoming, uh, did I say Alabama already? Um, and then there were several other states that tried that failed. Mm-hmm. So, or didn't pass. Um, you know, in other words, something happened and the bill was withdrawn or whatever. Um, so it seems, Lance, to me, that there's not a strong appetite for this in the education community. Do you think that's a fair analysis based on, just based on the number of states? Mm-hmm. That are moving in this direction. And with people locally that I've talked with, there are a few that are in favor of it, mm-hmm. but the the vast majority don't think that this is a good idea. But there I will be honest and there are some of my fellow colleagues that I've talked to who wouldn't mind doing this and if it were an option – for them would even volunteer for it. So this is going back to the Washington Post piece. In 2016, Utah's Union Middle School had a surveillance system, external doors that could be accessed only with IDs, and an armed policewoman known as a resource officer. When a 14-year-old boy shot another student twice in the head during a confrontation outside the building just after classes ended. Quote, even if we would have had metal detectors, it would not have mattered wrote Jeffrey P. Haney, district spokesman. He goes on to say, if we would have had armed guards at the entrance of the school, it would not have mattered. If we would have required students to have see-through backpacks and bags, it would not have mattered. The survey responses are consistent with a federally funded 2016 study by John Hopkins University that concluded there was, quote, limited and conflicting evidence in the literature on the short and long-term effectiveness of school safety technology. So what we're going to be looking at next is this very argument because uh, we're fortunate enough today, we haven't introduced them yet, to have somebody in the studio with us uh, who is a proponent of arming teachers. Uh, And of course, as some of you may be able to guess or surmise from your long history of listening to this program and what you've come to learn about your friendly redneck liberal Lance Jackson, uh, this may not be the type of thing that he's super in favor of. Uh, So we're going to get answers to all of that. And in the last bit of the show, of course, as always, we'll talk about solutions. Uh, What can be done? What should be done, if anything? Uh, We'll look at all of that and more. So there's plenty to come. And Lance, the reason we're talking about this today, Mm -hmm. 
is right in line with True Chat's mission. Right? It is. And yes. what is that mission? Our mission statement here at True Chat is to educate people by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations. Did I surprise you with that a little bit? No, I figured you were going there. Okay. I looked at the clock and I knew you were trying to spread and sponge it out and get a little bit further. Sponge it? Yeah, try to get- Sponge you know, it out. Grow it out there a little bit and make it last longer this first segment. <laughs> okay, sponge it out. I'll remember that. I like that. You like that one? Oh, it good. doesn't really make Spon- sense. Spo- no, it doesn't, but- <laughs> Where you just rub the sponge around and <laughs> well, you, yeah, right. Uh, it makes, okay. Well, the sponge grows. Oh, and so you make this segment Sp- sponge grow. Sponge it out, and you make this segment like grow it. so that it eats up the time. That sounds like it could be the name of a podcast. Sponge yeah. it out. Well, I'm I'm game for it. <laughs> okay, you can call whatever you want. I'll talk. <laughs> Got it. Um, so do check out the state of us dot org though as we continue because um, as we get into this discussion piece next, I think both of these articles do a good job providing different information. Um, but they do a nice job of pointing us in the direction of some some data. And part of what is being pointed out by school officials is that there isn't a lot of data actually around this. And um, as Lance, I'm sure, can recall, administrators like having data. So well, it's a relatively we, we, new... We get nervous. It's a relatively there's not new data. phenomenon. Yeah. I mean, I went to school in a rural district and many of the high school boys... Well, I didn't go... I mean, I, mean, I went to school, elementary school... In a rural area, I went to a public high school in a, in Columbus, Ohio, for high school and junior high. But before that, I was in a small rural setting, and the high school boys and the teachers and everybody else would drive to school in pickup trucks with their gun rack and the guns in the rack because they were going to go deer hunting afterwards or squirrel hunting or whatever, and left their vehicles unlocked. And so we live in a different day and age. I mean, totally. But I, 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 I this is a new development in education in the last new discussion. 50 years, which is why there's not a lot of data. Sure. So we've got more to talk about. We're going to get into a little bit of back and forth. Keep it right here on The State of Us, and we'll be right back. We are The State of Us. Here's your host, Justin T. Weller. That's me, or so they tell me anyway. That's what Our Lady says. Nearly 50 million public school students, 18 states have considered legislation related to arming school employees, and much of it concerns allowing firearms for designated security personnel. However, some bills are now addressing arming teachers and staff more broadly. We've kind of walked through so far what's happening in Florida and around the nation. Not a lot of districts seem to be embracing this, really not even a lot of states. Uh, However, That hasn't stopped the public conversation around the issue from continuing, and part of the reason for that, as we identified in the first part of the program, is that there's not a lot of data around this to support various arguments. Uh, Most of the schools that have experienced shootings in the the past did not have a lot of measures in place, so it's hard to know whether or not having those measures would have actually made any difference. Um, And often we've seen, even in the ones where those measures did exist, The procedure wasn't necessarily followed, therefore, again, skewing the data as to knowing whether or not those items would make a significant difference. Arming school teachers, even less data than just school safety systems, generally speaking. When I say that, we're talking about cameras, metal detectors, um, you know, certain types of entry systems, et cetera. So a lot of, a lot of different information out there, a lot of different ideas, um, but not enough hardcore data. So with us, We've got, of course, your friendly redneck liberal, Lance Jackson, who happens to have been uh, a lifelong educator. So he's going to come at it with that perspective for you. But then we've also got a current student uh, who's in the public school system who happens to be our producer, Caleb Spinner. So, Caleb, uh, we were talking the other day when we put this topic on the board. We've got a board in our meeting room, uh, and this is kind of where we keep uh, different things we're going to discuss. And I think you just kind of mentioned offhand, we weren't really trying to debate anything, uh, that we should arm teachers. And uh, naturally, um, Lance has some thoughts about that, as do I. But let's start off with, we're going to just give you the floor and and you provide us your position, as much or as little detail as as you think is important. Okay, so when you're talking about this and the very little that I've seen, there's many things to look at that make up this issue. There's... What I what I believe is as a current student at Mechanicsburg High School, a smaller rural area, 
I am close with almost all of my teachers. We're on a friend basis. Some of them are in my fantasy football league. They're like, they're people that I trust. I can confide in. We're friends in and out of school. We have a great relationship there where I would trust them. How many people are in your class? Uh, 68 last okay. time I checked. I, I'm using that because that'll help I yeah. think, people who are listening around the country get a perspective of when we say small, that's what we mean. Yeah. Um, so so I'm, I'm closer with these people. I trust these people a lot more than I think the bigger schools do. I know them a lot better than I think students at bigger schools know their teachers. So if if we decided to have teachers be arm themselves – I I trust that my teachers will be responsible with this, and I trust that one of them is just not going to shoot up the school one day. That's the other thing is at the bigger schools, you have not only more teachers, but you have more of that risk that somebody might explode one day and that there's going to be a background check that doesn't quite cover everything or leave something out. And teacher, unfortunately, goes off one day. So there's different things to look at. From my perspective as a small school rural student, I am for it just because I have a unique relationship with my teachers where I trust them completely with my life. Let's be clear about what you're for. You're for arming te- – you're for allowing teachers to be armed nationwide regardless of district size. Is yes. That, that's what you're saying? Yes. So even though you're ign- – just again, being clear, not nitpicking. So even though you're acknowledging that there's different problems at bigger schools, I mean, you get into campuses with that literally thousands of kids in some cases where many kids never meet most of the teachers, right? Not even, I mean, so even in that situation where you're saying it's more likely that something would happen, you still think that they should have the ability to do that. So you would want a process like this to take place. In other words, the decision should be up to a school board. Yes. As a, as a student, I'd feel safer with teachers arming themselves. You want the school board to have discretion, right? Not the state yeah. or the federal government. So you'd be okay if a school board decides we don't need that in our district or we don't want that. Yeah, because we've already ha- we already have a resource officer and a couple and literally the the police department is about maybe a mile down the road from the school. Okay. So I'm so, fine with that. And then but, teachers would have to go through background checks and training yes. prior to being able to do it. Yes. And I and again, and it I understand be I understand where it would it'd be, be voluntary. Tough. Right. I understand where it would be harder at some of the other schools who are not located a mile from their police station or have a bigger population, but just coming from where I am and knowing what I know, that's what I think is that's where I side. Lance, tell tell us well, your tell us your perspective. We miss we miss with that you know last six minute diatribe between the two of you. You missed the entire point of well, I trust the teachers. Okay, while I may or may not agree with that, the bigger issue becomes not everybody at Mechanicsburg or any school that I have ever run into, not every student is satisfied with the relationship with their teacher. Plus, you're dealing with adolescents who also have personal issues and problems that sometimes they don't have the tools with which to deal with those in the proper way. And so to give them access to guns and make that access so open that their teachers are carrying guns, that then it's not the teachers that you have to worry about on whether or not they are trustworthy, but you are giving access to young people who don't always make the best decisions, who don't always like school, who don't always have a good relationship with the teachers, you're making their access to guns even more available to them. Now you don't have to, you catch it with a medical, metal, excuse me, you check at the door with a metal detector, you do, you, you stop book bags. Okay. Well, now they don't have to bring it to school and try to get it into the facility. They can just take it from their teacher. Or, you know, how many times is there a struggle with a police officer with someone out in the community and within the struggle, someone is shot and killed, whether it's the police officer or the assailant. So I have a real hard, I understand, well, I trust my teachers. Okay, well, not every young person trusts their teachers. There are, and I would imagine even in Mechanicsburg, there are students who don't like school, who don't like the teachers. And now you've just made 
a weapon readily available to them to do damage if they get mad or if their girlfriend breaks up with them or they find out they're ineligible for an activity that they want to attend or their mom and dad are getting a divorce. Now they have just been given access to a gun when maybe they come from a home where there are no guns. And so now they haven't been taught gun safety. And so they now have access to this. So there's a whole lot more to this than that. Well, we should just trust the teachers because the teachers will know how to do this. You're making, to me, the bigger issue is you've just made guns available to the very people that you're trying to protect. And then you say, well, the teachers should, I, I don't know how many people have been in a, in a classroom. Teachers Most cannot people, be, probably. <laughs> but, I, but as a teacher and, and the idea uh-huh. that, you know, and even as a student, okay, you know, if the teacher is busy with two or three other students, you get away with things, right? I mean, you can, you can shoot a paper wide. You can tell your friend a joke. You can make an obscene gesture and you don't get caught. Okay. So now, if, now you throw guns into that mix. Who's to say that the teacher can't be distracted? Where are they going to, they're going to carry it on their hips? Is it going to be locked in their desk? Is it going to be locked in, you know, and then again, how safe is it? And the, the whole concept that the police department are a mile away. If I'm a shooter inside the school, how many people can I shoot before the police can get there? Even if they're only a mile away. So there are a lot of things that weren't talked about there by Caleb that I think I don't, I don't disagree with this point. I think you can trust the teachers. But I, but I'm not even sure you can do that. We see in the papers all the day, you know, every day that there are teachers that are doing illegal things in the classroom. Now, can you trust the majority of teachers? Do I think the majority of teachers are great people who have the students' best interests at hearts? Yes, I do. But just like any other profession, there are people there that are using the profession to do bad things. Schools get more notice. Schools and, and police officers, you know, all public servants get more of that than anybody else. But we can remember back a few years, you know, a decade or two probably now. Remember the postal shootings? You know, it even became part of the vernacular within society. Oh, that person's gone postal. Why? Because they just went nuts. They took a gun into a, you know, now we're seeing shootings at Walmart and we're, we're seeing shootings. I just don't know how precipitating the number of guns that a person's going to come t- come in contact with the with in a day makes it a safer environment. So we're going to continue this conversation. Uh, we we want to give Lance um, equal time to Caleb in order to reply or at least close to it. So he's got a couple minutes left uh, here that we'll roll over in the next segment, and that'll be part of I think leading well into our discussion about so what should be done if anything, and what and what about maybe the current system should be changed, which uh, I, I know. I think Lance has some thoughts on, certainly I do. So we've got a lot to talk about. Should schools arm teachers? That's been the discussion so far. We're going to continue it. Stay right here on The State of Us. We are The State of Us. Here's your host, Justin T. Weller. So far, 18 states have considered legislation related to arming school employees. With nearly 50 million public school students and over 3 million public school teachers, a huge portion of our population is involved and should be involved in this discussion. Uh, With the number of increasing shootings uh, over the past number of years, or at least the awareness of these shootings, it's certainly been at the forefront of public discussion. We've talked about so far Caleb's perspective on arming teachers, and he believes that as a student, he would feel safer in part because he trusts his teachers. Uh, He would like for them to go through uh, training prior to being able to carry this, and he'd, of course, leave the decision about whether or not even to make that available to teachers up to school districts themselves. Uh, Lance, on the other hand, sees some problems with that. Uh, Making access to these weapons easier uh, is problematic from his perspective, Uh, You've got adolescents who are dealing with a number of emotional uh, things at any given moment and, you know, how safe and how secure is the weapon. Um, So part of what I want to lead off with here is, you know, one of the ideas that I'm I'm sure has been thrown out there is, you know, there's obviously there there would be a significant difference between a teacher carrying the weapon on their hip uh, versus, for example, it being secured in a biometric 
authentication type safe. In other words, um, an iris scan or a fingerprint reading in order to open it so that only the teacher um, is the one who is able to access that safe in their room. Um, and of course, sure, I mean, there's always ways to bypass and hack safes, but you're talking about realistically speaking, Highly there's, improbable. There's almost that, never a perfect solution. No, I mean there are okay, no perfect so if there's, solutions. So if you but, put I, it, I, but I'm asking about that. But okay, so if you put them somewhere like that, okay, huh. and let's say it is secure. All right. So now, what's your plan if there is some kind of incident at the school? What's the teacher's first responsibility to go get the gun or to get the students in a safe location? Because now you've just put the teacher. You've you put a human being whose job is not to carry a gun. I did not become a police officer. I did not become a safety officer. That, that I wanted to work with kids in a very nonviolent, loving, caring atmosphere where, as Caleb pointed out, he is beyond just the student-teacher relationship, almost to a friend where there's a, a mutual trust. And that's the, the situation I want to work in if I'm an educator. Right. Okay. Now you're saying, well, you know, you didn't train to be a police officer. You didn't even want to be a police officer. You're not wired to be a police officer. And I know I don't have to get to training. Okay. So now here's the other problem you come up with. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, their student, their teacher carries a gun. Mr. and Mrs. Smith's teachers don't. Now have you opened up a lawsuit if there is an incident? Because one set of parents, their kids were protected with the gun. The other ones weren't. And no matter what happens, what if the one with the gun, it's stole, it, it's taken by the people that are causing the incident and more students are shot? Not that they protected them. Or if they did protect them, but the other classroom was all shot up, now have you opened up a can of worms, illegal worms here? You know, C as cer far it's as – certainly and then, and then the teacher – what do you, what are they supposed to do? Do I go get my gun first or do, do I do what I've been trained to do and do instinctively? And that is I'm going to protect my students by getting them into a safest place, bar, lock the door, shove them out. If I'm on the ground floor, shove them out the window, depending on where the shooting is taking place at the other side of the school. All of these plans that schools have had since Columbine or put in place since Columbine. Do I initiate those programs or do I go to my laser safe ID, whatever you said, and get my gun first. Which, which, which action do I take first? There, now you have to have protocol for all of that. Sure. There are numerous va variables that come into, into play with any situation like this um, and new precautionary measures, you know, that you have to put in place. But my point, procedure. even if you have the precautionary and, measure, what step do you take first? Well, I don't know. I'm not the one that would make the decision. And I, neither I, is a teacher. Well, and I'm not saying that's not what be. they went into the profession to do. I don't think a school board should make the decision either. If a school board decides that it wants to move in this type, in the hypothetical situation, which I'm not advocating and saying that I'm in favor of school districts having this ability, I'm merely playing out the scenario and saying that if a school district did have that ability, to me, it would make sense that they would hire professionals who spend their lives in security or who are police officers or former police officers to develop said plan. If you're playing out Caleb's situation of this voluntary, you know, teachers go through this training program, we didn't talk about Caleb, whether or not they should have him on their hip in a safe, in a drawer. I mean, what, where are you at on that? Cause I mean, there's a lot of, as Lance has highlighted, there's a ton of variable in a big difference between it being on your hip or setting on your desk versus, you know, being in a safe or a centralized location. Who has access? How do they have access? Right. Lance brought up a lot of points that I had not thought about. And I totally understand being a student. I see the obscene gesture, the joke, whatever. As soon as the back gets turned, you get into the point where the hip, it's easily accessible to the teacher, but it's also easily accessible to the student. You get to the drawer, to locking it in your drawer. Well, then it's not as accessible. So if something happens out of the blue, you know, nobody gets prepared warning of, hey, in five minutes, we're going to have a school shooting. Everybody get your guns out. Be prepared. You know, you almost never get that unless you have great police and great investigators and they get a hold of it. But then if something happens inevitably, then you're without that gun until you can unlock the safe or unlock the drawer or wherever it is and take it. and then. 
you get to the decision of what do I go for first, which I don't believe that any human being should have to decide between is protecting their students or getting the gun. It shouldn't be a decision. It should always be protect the kids first. And if I can get to the gun, then that's an added bonus. But what if the gun's the but, best way to protect the students? See, right, you, you, right. You, you there's always, a, there's always something second, else. Right, you're putting you're put in a situation where you have to make a split-second decision. You're putting a split-second decision in the hands of somebody who's not trained to make said split-second decision. Which well, is that, something that, also that's that's been counted for for Lance, and I and I agree with that. So, but you, that to answer your into, question, though, I don't know. I don't know where you put it. Training is, I mean, you know, you say they have to take training. That I think in and of, I mean, you could do just a whole program just on that because what is that training? I mean, are we talking about a half day class here, you know, or are we talking about a, a, a six month course on crisis and gun management? You know, I mean, what are the, and, and again, this isn't, this isn't picking on your side of things, Caleb. No, and no, it's not giving, I'm not trying to intentionally favor anybody's side. All I'm getting at is when people say that, and like when Florida says this, what does that mean? I mean, right. Because you say training, but there's a huge can of worms there with there's a wide range of what you could mean by training and a teacher who ha- who voluntarily goes through a six month course on this type of crisis management, how to make that split second decision, you know, and gun safety is going to be a lot different than a teacher who sits through a half day seminar and has their concealed carry. Well, I mean, just again, without taking you and, know, previous and, history and, 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 and all and that into 35 account. 35 year educator. If you want to just talk classroom time, I've spent over eight years, the last 35 years in the classroom training to be a better teacher. And then you can't, you can't disregard on the job training. Right. And, and, and almost every good teacher that I know, you're constantly training in your craft. You're, you're constantly, I mean, I know 30 year teachers in our local school districts who go home at night and get on the internet to look up new ideas to teach a lesson that they've taught for 25 years. Because now with the internet, you can, you can get, you know, there are programs out there that teachers upload their lessons and share with others. And so, wow, I've taught it this way, but this really fits my students this year. And so teachers are constantly, at least the good ones, the ones that I would hire if I was running a school are constantly training Within their field. Much so like police officers who are on the job theirs. every day. Exactly. Right. There's all that on the job training because that's your chosen profession. Anytime you put a novice into a new profession, they're not going to do it as well as the people who have spent their entire career training for said job. And I, I would hope, and I mean, I'm sure there's people out there who would probably argue counter to this, but I would think that most people's arguments is – Somewhere along the lines of when a teacher is put in that terrible situation, providing them an additional option to protect their students is better than provide than not having that option. In other words, the risk associated with a secure safe in a classroom, whether or not they go for the gun first or secure their students first, those risks are not as great as them. In other words, the benefit of having the resource there for them in the event that they're placed in that terrible situation outweighs the possibility that they may not handle it exactly the way a trained person, an experienced person would. I'm not, for what it's worth, because we haven't talked about that much yet, the whole gun issue, okay, so even school shootings, for me, it pulls back to this. We're treating a symptom, not the cause, you know. Um, we, we say people are getting shot in schools. So the solution is to secure schools. And to me, it's, well, why are the shootings happening in the first place? I'm about treating what I see as the root, root cause of a problem. And to me, the root cause of the problem is not, you know, making the school safer. That doesn't fix it. That doesn't fix the problem. And I think Lance agrees with that. I think. I, I, yes, if I, if that was the topic, I'd have totally taken it a different track. It's, it's not about arming. It, it's a societal issue where we use, where we turn to guns to solve problems and, and, and to solve issues. Totally agree with you on that. And where I was trying to head with this, the point that I was getting, trying to reach, I'm not against making schools safer. I'll be clear on that. I don't like the idea of arming teachers. Um, I, I don't think that it's thought through enough. 
For example, I think what Florida put in place is a half measure to offset lawmakers' responsibility as leaders of our country and saying, well, we'll offset it to school boards who already have more than they can realistically handle on their plates anyway. So I don't love that. I, I, I'm not, and that includes your idea, Caleb. I don't, I don't love handing it over to school boards. Aside from most of them don't have people on their board who are qualified to implement such a program anyway. They don't have trained people to do this. But it was a reactionary measure yes. by the politicians to get the people off their back. They can go to the people and say, see, we did something. Yes. And, and so to me, it goes back to what we've talked about on the gun issue before, which is you have to look at why would anybody you know, in the first place, do something like this. And you can never eliminate all of them, but I don't think our schools should be set up like prisons either. Um, I don't, I don't love that, you know, I have to be buzzed into the school. Does it add an extra layer of protection? Does it potentially discourage somebody who might otherwise take a stupid action? Does it give them that moment of pause? Maybe it does, you know, and, and if it makes the teachers and students feel safer, even if it's a false sense of security, I'd rather them be able to focus on learning than be worried about getting shot. At the same time, there are problems with that. And that's why I think that we as a society have to look at the root cause of the problem. Are we strict enough with how people should get guns? I don't think so. If you need a license to drive a car, you need a license to own a gun. People may not like that and they may disagree with it. I grew up with them. I don't have a concealed carry and nobody in my family did and we used them on my farm and I'm familiar with how to handle certain types of guns, but I still think you ought to have a license. And that's in part because I'm familiar with how just, just how dangerous they really are. Um, so that's where I'm at. And I think you, if you start with that and in the meantime, as that process is underway and people smarter than me are working on figuring out how that works in the meantime, if you're taking school precaution measures like, um, secure entry systems, buzzing in through cameras, et cetera. I'm okay with a little bit of both while we go toward what we need to get to. I don't like the idea of arming teachers. So hopefully that was articulated clearly enough. I think today people got three kind of different takes. I don't know if we ever arrived at, Lance, I know we talked about before the show, that generally speaking, school safety measures, in your opinion, shouldn't exist, right? I mean, not n- not none, like lockdown procedure, et cetera. I don't know, maybe not. But my understanding was that that's kind of where you were is a place of learning shouldn't be set up in such a way where we're spending an inordinate amount of time on this. Well, here's here's a, a quote that I, from, my, from myself, okay? That I think that a lot of these things that we're doing, while well-intended, set up a false sense of security then when the shooting, when a shooting or an incident occurs, even further deepens the sense of despair among young people because we're selling them that they are protected and that they are safe. And then when something does happen, now they're like, oh man, they, all the people that I trust, as Caleb pointed out, trust his teachers and his administrators. They've said that he is safe. So he feels safe. So then when an incident would occur, tragically, then there's even a deeper sense of despair and despondence that, oh my gosh, the people that I trusted said I was. And so we're selling a false sense of security. And I'll just end with that. All right. So lots to think about. As we can tell, it's an issue that uh, still continues to be difficult because as Lance highlighted, it's something that unfortunately is relatively new in the public discussion. And there's not a lot of data to go on and there's not a lot of past experience to work off of. Um, Not as much as we'd like, uh, but hopefully... Uh, If people keep having conversations about this, we'll arrive at something that's better than what we've got now. Um, And I think hopefully it goes back to trying to figure out why we're in the situation we're in in the first place. So Lance, people, we've challenged them to bring other people into the conversation because that's part of moving particularly challenging topics forward, hopefully. Um, What are the different ways that people can be invited to tune in? Well, there's Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else that fine podcasts are found. For the State of Us on True Chat in Urbana, Ohio, I'm Justin T. Weller. And I'm Lance Jackson. Special thanks to our producer, Caleb Spinner, for being on. We'll see you next time on The State of Us. Be the change.